Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Let's see who is with us today. Hi, whoever that has come in, please say hello so that I know you're here. Hi, Roxy. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Jasmine. Okay, I'm going to turn this one on so that I can see you. Hello. Yeah. I'm turning my phone on as well so that when you send me love and like, I'll be able to know. Hi, Carlo. Who is Carlo? Um, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Right, we will um we will actually give a little bit of time, uh, maybe about two to three minutes, uh, for whosoever that wants to uh come in. Um so you guys can say hello. I'll see whether I can get Gray to say hello to you guys. Yeah, wait. Hi. Hi, Sabrina. Let's see. Hey, great. Say hello first. Say hello, then you go, okay? Hey. This is Gray. This is Gray. Say hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Gray. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming to see my grandma perform. Okay. Uh, the story is Gray is actually not really my cat, but Gray is actually my second son's cat. Um, the story of Gray. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay. He just want to go. Okay, the story of Gray is that uh, Mickey, uh, Mickey is um, uh, one of our friends. She actually rescued Gray um, somewhere, I think on the street. So Gray comes in, um, had a very terrible accident that um, injured the trauma on the head uh, and definitely her, uh, his body. So, um, when we have to uh, remove the eye because the eye is very terribly injured and then uh, we lost the eye. So because of very bad infection, we have to remove it. And um, we thought uh, at that point of time, I was actually, um, I also rescued another white color cat um, that has blue eyes. So um, uh, after discussing with Meiki, we we thought of asking my son to adopt this cat instead of the white cat with the blue eye so we thought that cat might have you know a better chance uh, to be rehomed than gray so we got my son to uh, to go to the clinic and see gray i'm very grateful that uh, he didn't see gray as um, a, a, a strange cat but he see gray that is someone uh, who need help so um so then he decided to adopt uh gray and then there he is with us i think it's almost uh four five years ago already so he has been us uh, for four five years and now he's really handsome you don't even you don't even know that he actually lost an eye if you don't look at him clearly okay right thanks everyone uh thanks clara Okay, so let us start today's class. Um, before I start today's class, I just want to tell you that our uh, cat emergency um, class is coming very soon. Uh, and then we're working on publishing our um, cat ebook as well. Uh, we also want to thank um, uh, Breed to actually publish our dog uh, ebook into a physical book. So we have already started to uh, sell it or gi given some away uh, to people who has actually won the contest. So thanks, thank, thank you guys for all the support. And uh, please do share this class with others because we realize that 
um, other than pet body language to know that whether they are um, happy or not happy at how to handle we think this vocalization it's also something bothering the owners a lot so whatever that we try to do is to understand the cats more so that we can handle them better so that they we can also um, see and observe and also pick up signs that they are not well uh, faster all right so i have a little bit of surprise for you guys at the end of the class uh, because of the new cat program that we have. I'm very excited. So do stay tuned, right? So now let's go in um, to the real class. So I need you guys to probably uh, get your notebook and all that ready uh, for us to know a little bit about um, the vocalization of our cats, all right? So first of all, um, most of the people would think that um, knowing their body language, uh, knowing their eye, how their eye look, how their ears look and all that, they will know that they're happy or not happy. But there's something that really bothering all the owners is that, especially people who live in the condo, I'm not sure whether you're one of them, the cat will just keep meowing and meowing at night that your neighbor have to complain to the management and tell them that no they have animals in the house and please take them away um and strange enough babies cry as, at night too very loud the neighbor baby so anyone wants to chase that baby away from home so if you or your neighbor won't actually complain about your neighbor's baby, they shouldn't be complained about your cat. But put it this way, if your baby is crying, you will probably find out why is he or she crying, right? Why is she crying at night? Whether she's, you know, having stomach ache or, 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 or you know, wet, wet himself or actually, you know, very cranky uh, because he's not well, like having fever. But you have never thought of why your cat is meowing so much at night, right? And you keep thinking about your neighbors complain and try to rehome or get rid of your cat, okay? So I hope you're not, not one of them that actually try to get rid of your cat because they are meowing at night. But most of the time, this owner will come to the vet to seek help, to ask, you know, why are they doing this? So we have to run the whole lecture with them uh, you know, trying to figure out why the cat is uh, meowing at night. So first of all, cat is a nocturnal animal, meaning they're very active at night. Okay, you have to first understand why uh, why they are why they are actually being being very active at night because naturally, supposedly, to be very active at night and sleep in the afternoon. That's what most of the cat do as well. So then. Because of understanding this, we will try to also uh, modify this to be able to suit how we are uh, living as well, especially we are the one that living in the condo, okay? So uh, why, why, of, um, why of some of our cats um, likes, to, likes to do this uh, different kind of vocalization? And you, if you really pay attention, they actually vocalize very differently when they ask for food. They vocalize very differently when they come to manja. They also vocalize very differently when they are miang. <laughs> you know what miang is, right? When they really come on heat, okay? When they really want to find partner, ho hiao, ho hiao, then they, they actually vocalize differently. Okay, let's see what are the reasons that they vocalize, all right? Okay, so take note down or you can even take a photo of this if you want. Uh, first of all is that they are trying to seek attention. Uh, trying to seek attention probably because of um, you're working late, you know, all the time and he's bored and all that. The boredom 
can be one of the reason uh, why why is uh, why is your cat uh, trying to do all this uh, vocalization? Second thing, it could be because you're a multi-cat household, meaning to say that you have other cats, you know. He's jealous of that other cats, always get your attention, and he don't like it. He probably will fight that cat. He probably will come near you so that the other cats come, cannot come near you. You know, this kind of attention-seeking behavior. All right? So, um, the second thing is the sexual... Uh, cycle that I'm telling you, the sexual behavior, okay? So one is the female. The female will be really like um, um, asking to, to tell you that they are actually on heat. They will have a certain voice. Okay, I will try to imitate some of these voices, like attention-seeking behavior voice that he'll come very soft, very gently near you, maybe rubbing himself uh, uh, against your leg, you know, um, against your body, trying to do that and do that very gentle meow, 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 that very gentle meow, okay? And the sexual meow or the sexual behavioral vocalization or if your cat is a male cat, that the female cat is somewhere around, <laughs> the corner going on heat, um, then the meow will be the one that your neighbors hate. It goes like, oh, oh, oh. Then he go, go very high pitch, very high pitch, very uh, non-stop kind of uh, vocalization. That's the one that probably he, he is either is a he that he actually sends some female somewhere or is a she that she's coming on heat and she and she also want to be mated. Okay. So then with this, right, they will have uh, some physical position of bending down, bending down with the butt up. And then they also will come and rub you. And then sometimes they will try to uh, run away from home as well. Then you will think that why are they doing that or why are they running away from home? It's not because they want to, it's because um, it's their need of uh, mating. That is why it's, it's like a nature call to them that they need uh, to actually find the mate uh, or, or, or to mate anyone or, or the cats that is around, okay? The play behavior, okay? So everyone got it or not? Okay, if everyone got it, um, you know what I say about the sexual behavior, you can type meow, M-E-O-W on your chat so that I know that you're listening to me. <laughs> All right, come, give me some like and love if you if you can as well. All right, so that I, I could know that you are following. All right, thank you, Lip Hao. Right, so, okay, for play behavior, for play behavior, Play behavior means uh, this, this cat want to play. When this cat want to play, it's it's very different kind of meow. Uh, this playing meow is that um, they will also do with some body language when they go in and out, like, you know, jumping near you. Uh, the other day, I was very surprised to find out there's a cat called a kitten called Tan Tan. This kitten called Tan Tan, the owner was telling me that he will actually take the toy, you know, going around the house and look for the owner and then drop the toy in front of the owner and start looking up to her and meow to her that she wants to play. Any one of you have this experience or any one of your cat actually, um, actually do this play behavior meow? Any one of you. If, if, you, if you have a cat that is doing that, um, please uh, type, uh, type number one on the screen to let me know that your cat too is uh, doing this play, play meow. Well, we do, we know dogs, hi Vincent, we know dog does this all the time. We know they, they always bring us toys for us to play. 
but cats are pretty rare. They, they even if they want to play, they probably will be looking at you, you know, um, putting the tail up, you know, asking, asking you uh, to, to play. But very rarely, they will actually uh, pick up a toy, go around the house to look for you and drop the toy in front of you and start looking up at you to meow for you to play. Okay, wow. Really, Emir? Wow, I, I'm surprised. Yeah, you, Emir, uh, baby, um, Jasmine, you, you should actually make me some, uh, you know, videos of this. We're going to compile this. Hi, Roxy. Uh, we're going to compile this, the one that they actually pick up toys. Well, a very friendly cat. Now, now you, you are not surprised that so many of our friends here actually have cats that is um, doing this. Now, they actually just want to ask to play. And most of the time, most of the time, they will be meowing. And these few cats, I think, are the one that really like, ah, oh, I meow and she doesn't understand me. So they will go and pick up the toy and drop it to you and ask you to play as well. Okay, Bayou, I, I really think that you guys should help me to, uh, to load some video. When you come to the two days class uh, chat room, post it on the chat room for us so that we can compile a very nice and funny video about cats uh, bringing us toys, shouldn't we? Okay, very good. And okay, coming up will be some medical problem. Okay, some medical problem uh, when they feel discomfort or they feel painful, sometimes they will actually meow as well. But you have to know sometimes not only they will do the meowing, they will also whine. They whine not like the dog whine, like, mm, mm, but then they actually go on this very uh, uncomfortable uh, vocalization way that they tell you uh, they are in pain. So there are two to three ways of showing uh, how they are painful, okay? For example, if the cat is very painful on the body or on the spine. So as you're stroking them, you can see that their body shivers a bit and then they'll turn around and Rawr! like that. Means they're painful. Okay, that's a way of vocalization. Or they actually lie down. You, you do not know that they are in pain. Most of the time, owner didn't pick this up as in pain. They will just lie down their breathing rate could be a bit higher than normal. Resting breathing rate could be a, a bit higher than normal. And then um, and then they will probably show show to you that they are uh, they are just very tired lying down and then they do that yeah 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 that kind of whining rather than rather than a real uh sharp um meow okay the sharp meow is whenever uh they get the pain uh hit on them then and you also realize that sometimes when the cat is in pain or like a, a nerve pinch or things like that they will be sitting down properly and then suddenly they will jump out and meow like that that also because of maybe some of the uh, nerve pinch or some of the joint pain that she doesn't move right and then she has that kind of vocalization okay and an aggressive display aggressive di display is uh is is pretty common that you guys can see is that hissing and the kind of long going the kind of meow and then when they want to fight and they just go <laughs> You suck! I thought you had gone back to Japan. Why are you here? Hi, Fanny. Hi, everyone. It's so good to have you guys back here to, to come to our class. Okay. Right. Now, we cannot. We don't have time to waste. I'm sorry. We'll just go on with the, with the other slide, okay? Because I've prepared quite a few things for you guys 
as I was, uh, as I promised you guys, like, you know, some, some uh, furniture that you can modify at home and things like that. Okay, let's do the next slide. Okay, how can this excessive vocalization uh, problem be treated? Now, because it is not a, a, a real medical issue that you can actually give medication and it's, it will be gone, most of the time it's not like that. Uh, most of the time because it's behavioral issue. Uh, that's why you probably need to do a few things, all right? First of all, is to understand the problem. Like, like we told you, why? Why is this uh, problem uh, persist? Let's say uh, like what you, what, what you try to figure out whether it is because of some um, um, heat, some heat or uh, is it because they are not well so like i told you just now you must understand try to understand the problem like the vocalization um together with the behavior or the body language say for example like just now when you are stroking them suddenly when you touch behind the spine or touch near the leg they start doing that jumping um jumping high pitch vocalization meaning to say that they're probably in pain so um to know that you could actually video that for your vet and then when you bring to your vet show them the video as you are touching touching the leg because you know what happened when they come to the vet they probably won't uh show the same or they will I, actually hide the pain or they're going to be probably very aggressive to the vet that they can't touch it at all. So um, video that at home when they are in the most comfortable situation might really help your vet uh, to diagnose what is really the problem. Okay? Now, uh, second thing. Uh, those those um, other things like hypertension, hypertension or endocrine diseases, uh, or hyperparathyroidism sometimes um, do give them this uh, hyperactive and hypervocalization kind of issue as well. Uh, but I won't go really deep into this medical thing because uh, you just need to um, video how they vocalize, uh, how they react to your touch, or you know when uh, tied with the timeline, uh, when do they actually vocalize? video this, give this information to your vet, it will actually definitely uh, help them before they even touch your cat, okay? That actually helps them not to touch the wrong area that your cats become very aggressive and won't be able to uh, examine them further, all right? So that's uh, talking about understanding another issue. Say, for example, if it is the sexual uh, mating kind of meow, then probably it's time... Uh, for you to uh, neuter your pet, all right? So modify the environment. Okay, how do you uh, modify the, the environment when you are, um, uh, when they are vocalizing excessively? You know, cats don't like to see other cats. I'm not sure whether um, um, you, you, you know this. So for example, um, they are probably vocalizing uh, because they are being locked out of the door. They probably want to sleep with you. So if they don't get into the room, they will start vocalizing. Meaning to say that they probably want, want you to be around or want to be inside the room. So then you have to um, modify that to, to let them know that it is okay to sleep this place here probably make another nice, um, more comfortable area for them to sleep on because they like pillows, they like they like soft uh, bedding. So probably make a very nice bedding uh, on your sofa or on your or on some other, um, uh, what is this, living room area for them to actually sleep on rather than you know, meowing because you don't let them uh, come into the room. All right. And then uh, other thing is because, like I told you, they don't like to see other cats. So in any uh, circumstances that they will be seeing other cats, 
uh, let's say neighbor's cat or something, they will start vocalize. Then you probably have to change the environment, um, making their sleeping area or their uh, playing area away from the door, away from where you're opening the door, away from where the actually stray cat or other cats can actually pass by your door. Uh, that actually makes them uh, stimulate them to vocalize. And because these cats always be or, or always move around your neighborhood, right? Or around your, in front of your door. So your cats will be very alert most of the time and stand by and look into like, okay, when is this guy going to come? <laughs> and then they will start vocalizing when they see this person or even they smell this cat, you, uh, you know, maybe 100 meters away um, at the at the leaf, they will probably still um, reacting to it. They are very, very sensitive to smell too. So um, try to try to do that. And then uh, you also can modify them uh, on, the, uh, on the time that you feed them. Some cats will keep meowing at the time that you need to feed them. It's like, where's my food? Where's my food? Where's my food? So uh, when, when they ask for their food, and it's not being provided, then they will keep coming to meow at you. So what you do is probably, uh, instead of putting the food all the time there, uh, you probably can set a timing, the right timing to actually feed them or uh, another smaller amount uh, for them to munch at night. Because cats, um, cats, unlike dog, they sometimes don't finish their meal then then. They like to munch and go play and come back. You know, that's that's um, that's how they are. Uh, sometimes they, they want to eat. And then, then after that, maybe in a short while, they just eat a few kibbles and then they want to go and play. So cats are pretty different from dogs. So I need you to um, modify that environment too. So number three, modify behavior. Uh, what are the things that we're talking about uh, modifying the behavior? This is something uh, like I told you because they always like to uh, uh, be very active at night and sleep uh, in the morning or in the afternoon. So, um, uh, so what happened is when they, uh, when they like to um, uh, be active at night and you are there sleeping, not entertaining them. So what would they do is that um, they will start meowing. So what the best thing that you can do is that you make them tired in the afternoon or in the evening when you're around. So keep playing with them, you know, throw toys, you know, play, play your play your string, uh, play everything. Um, or, or, or doing these feeding toys, uh, chasing this uh, Kong, the, the one that you can, the toys where you can actually put in the food, you know, and, and let them chase around before they actually eat uh, so that they get tired or they increase their activities in the afternoon and in the evening so that then they don't, they don't be so active at night. So they get a little bit more tired at night and they can uh, rest at night. So th these are the routine uh, thing that you can, you can actually um, keep them occupied on. All right. Um, um, other than that, it's like the social play. You can actually get uh, social play with other cats that they know most of the time. Do not... Um, do not uh, actually, uh, how to say, do not uh, expose them straight away to a cat that they doesn't know and put them together right away. It's, it's definitely a no-no. When you always want to introduce a cat to your cat, please let them smell their smell first. That's one. Second thing is that you can actually let them uh, be around each other but not contacting each other. So maybe one in the carrier, one in the room, that kind of thing. And then after that, slowly, uh, then you actually put one in the carrier, one outside. Always put the one more dominant um, outside, especially the one, you know, your cat and new cat coming in. Always 
uh, the house cat outside so that he feels that he's in, in control, in dominance. And then once he kind of uh, know that this particular cat or this new person is not causing any issue or, or, uh, or taking away any attention from you, then they are okay uh, with, uh, with playing or, 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 or be with this cat. Okay, and definitely um, uh, playing outdoors. The problem about playing outdoors is that uh, we are very worried about uh, them uh, going out, especially in the balcony, um, in the corridor and all that, because we are living in a condo. You just have to be very, very, very super, super, super careful. Uh, be very careful on your windows, on your on your corridors and your door because sometimes they can just sit there and watch the bird but sometimes the birds come pretty near them that they want to catch the bird and then they fell we we always have cats that fell from don't know how many floors um and they don't die and then they come with like multiple fractures um the the medical fee will be too expensive for for some people to to afford and some some of them is just like too painful that you know they have to choose to put down but we do we do save some cats of of in this um condition and they got better um we have one cat in the clinic that actually um are having the same uh, issue but think about it if you can prevent it why let it happen because they are your family when they really come into this you know not able to walk and all that or or, or, or need to go through this terrible surgery you still have to put them on okay number four is neutering um definitely definitely uh neutering is is uh one of the way uh, to reduce the the sexual or the the vocalization because of uh, mating, all right. So okay, I think we are quite done with uh, the vocalization part. Any question about this vocalization? You all can please type in the uh, type in the chat box so that we can um, answer you. All right. Okay. So now we change the whole topic into the second thing that I want to talk about. Um, which is which is how do we actually modify or use some very simple and not so expensive furniture to actually make a play place for your cat. Remember just now I'm telling you, this is not like the real new, new topic. It's related to this vocalization and behavior problem because once your cat actually uh, gets uh, the hang of uh, playing at home, the, that is actually keeping them busy or a place that they like to be around, they won't be so bored, they won't vocalize so much, and then they won't be too active at night, okay? This is one of the reason, okay? We have a very nice question here. I think I'll take this question first. Whenever I walk away, my cat will meow. Can I know why? Now, I have actually taught this one uh, in the beginning of the class. Anyone can answer uh, baby cry this this particular um, question. Anyone? Come on. I've talked about this just now. Whenever you walk away or you're not with your cat, your cat start meowing. That's because I have a cat like that too. <laughs> So, want to be with the owner? Remember, if Pang Jun can put us back on the, um, I want to know the reason. 
the first ever reason that why when you walk away, when you're not around, when you're not in the room, very good, Fanny, very good. Because they try to seek your attention. Like I told you just now, it's either because they are supposed to be with you, like uh, one of the reasons why they keep meowing, it's also because of separation anxiety. Um, every day, I don't dare to work so long. I go to the office like three, four hours. Then I need to be home with him. <laughs> cool. Work-life balance, this is what we call. <laughs> he cry. He cried at the door if I step out of my house. Okay. Fanny, you can read more about separation anxiety um, in Google or in anything. Today, I don't think we have time to talk about separation anxiety. But that is also one of the reasons why that you are actually having your, your cat like that. It's because they want attention. So it's either... So it's either they they um they want you to be around, okay, or you can actually train them step by step by leaving by leaving just for a while, just for a while, say about five minutes, ten minutes, and then you come back with something that um they like, and then stroke them, be with them the whole day. So do this during holiday, you know, once in a while. And then so that he knows that uh, maybe afternoon or evening, you go for another, instead of 10 minutes, you go for an hour to two hours kind of a dinner. And then you come back uh, doing this, this to them as well. Okay. Then slowly, slowly, slowly uh, put the time frame longer so that uh, they won't feel that they are being left in the house. Okay, but this has to be this. This is something that you need to you need to actually slowly uh, help them on. It's just like baby cry when you actually put them into the preschool. The same the same thing because they just want you to be around. They want you to be around because they feel very comfortable and very confident uh, when you are around. Okay, so and because they love you so much, you are, you are, most of the time you have to remember you are their everything, you're their whole world. So they want to be like that. But this is definitely a behavior issue. So slowly, slowly work this out with them uh, bit by bit, bit by bit, increasing the timeline, remember? And then another, another thing that I want to teach you is that making things like this will make them divert their attention from you to some other thing. Okay, this is also very important. Okay, Ho. Uh, right, so look at this bookshelf. I don't know whether you can look at it. The bookshelf can be such a wonder that you also make a small space in between for your cats. And I know it's quite difficult to have that kind of bookshelf here. So things like the middle one, uh, it's easier to, to make. Okay, so you can actually close your window still because you're in the condo. You close your window, but you make the platform just next to your window that they can actually climb on, like this one, like the third, uh, like the third photo. You have the short one, you have the, the top one because they can actually jump from the, the shorter one to the top and then they can actually look outside. And they are very comfortable looking outside like that. Uh, you can actually put some bathing like what, what this person do, put some bathing so that they know that that's the place that... And, and even looking outside for nothing actually keep them entertained. I'm not sure whether you know, but this is how they entertain themselves. And because they are entertaining themselves, they don't realize that actually it has actually passed two to three hours. Uh, then uh, it's the time that you come home. And then when this thing goes longer, let's say, for example, you have birds and all that around your house, that's even better because this is, a, this is more entertainment, like a TV show to them. And then they will be happier and then they don't realize that, oh, okay, it's another day. And, and now, now my owner is at home. If you don't have this uh, window, if you, if, you, if you have a landed place that you have, um, you have uh, the whole uh, glass door, 
Then the last picture, which at the fourth picture here, is the one that you really want to do. You just actually do the shelf, you know, the you go Ikea or even, even Tesco to buy this shelf. Uh, like this one, the shelf that you simply put on. I think you can get it from, from Shopee Lazada as well. This kind of shelf next to your uh, glass door and then just put some bedding there. You can put some bedding and then at the pole, right, at the pole, you can actually put some uh, scratching material as well. Mine sleep on top of my piano. Very good. <laughs> You know why they sleep on the piano? Because the piano is high and you don't have any other high places for them to sit on. So it's not that they love your piano or, or it's not that they actually, you know, uh, be so naughty that likes the piano instead of other sofa, you know, that's more comfortable. Just because the piano top uh, is higher than your, your sofa, that's all. They like to be in control, okay? They like to be in control. They like to actually look down and see everything then they feel like they're in control and they love that kind of feeling i'm not sure whether you know it but cat actually loves that kind of feeling that being in control even though they are not okay they just like to be uh, very high hammock a uh, shelf and hammock uh, can be up at the window as well but a very solid one that they can sleep on most of the time uh, would be very helpful. Okay, so let's see the next slide where we can actually get um, this one. Okay, so on the left side is the one that you say your shelf and all that. And note that the leftmost picture, the, the leftmost picture, that they have a hiding place. Can you see a row or box up there? Love this one. I bought expensive bedding and they choose the box. They love boxes. Okay. This is the next point that I want to tell you, uh, Kyrene. Uh, if I if I uh, call your name correctly, Kyrene. Okay, this one um, is actually, even when you put on top, some of it, it can be exposed that he can actually look around. There are some that you can actually put on boxes and like a hideaway place or like a round thing for this one uh, for them to hide because that is also that is also um, something that you you want to look into yeah that's a cat that's a cat inside that uh, round box thing is actually they like to just climb up but I feel like sleeping. I just don't want people to bother me. So I like this dark, cozy area to sleep in. Okay, so they just sleep on. And then the, the middle one, the middle, um, the middle shelf is also something that I really want to encourage you to DIY on if you can. If you look into this shelf, right, it's actually just a normal wooden shelf. But what they do is they actually make holes in between makes holes in between that the cats can jump up and down and then they tie the uh, string in between as well that they can actually scratch on if you notice there's a little box at the lowest uh lowest shelf and then with the little box that's a smaller curtain all right why so because they like privacy especially they go to toilet they love privacy okay uh, cats love cr closet for sure, yeah. So, um, so what you do is the 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 peeing area or the or the little tray, or the little tray. Try to actually uh, close it with something, either a box or a curtain, uh, or a curtain or um, um, or whatever that you can find to to cover it. Okay, that's good. And then the third one, the third play area is just some very simple uh, DIY shelf. I think it only costs like 20 ringgit each for you to put it on. So yeah, do this so that you can actually play with this on this or they, they will play on their own on this as well. So when they, are, they have things to play with, they have 
things to entertain themselves with the windows and all that. So they don't bother, you know, seeking attention from you so much. All right. So lastly, I think I would need to talk about, uh, all right, the scratch pole. Now, we always buy expensive scratch pole. I'm, I don't know whether you know we have the big uh, cat tree and all that. Like what Kyrene say, right? I want to tell you, we buy the two, three hundred bucks, uh, two, three hundred ringgit uh, cat scratching tree. And believe it or not, my cat still scratched my sofa. <laughs> I have to show you how my cat scratched my sofa. But uh, we realized that when we start doing this uh, kind of uh, string around the stools, around our tables, um, this is the things that actually also keep them occupied. And you, the best thing is you can actually DIY this one on your own, okay? And then if you can see on this table, other than the scratching pole, they have a hiding bedding as well. And then also there's another scratching mat on the floor, okay? Really, can't give too much of privacy when they are doing big business with accidentally. Is it? <laughs> I don't know whether anyone else have this problem, but most of the cat uh, know how to go to the toilet very well. And they definitely, you, you cannot be uh, peeping on your cat's pooing, right? And then pick it up right away. Um don't really think that's a healthy thing to do. I'm sorry, too. Um, uh, I personally don't agree on this. I'm not sure whether other people have, have this uh, similar, uh, similar experience that you have to peep on your cat after poo, then straight away pick out so that they don't accidentally step on the poo. What you can do is you can put a mat. You can put a mat or a, or a scratching mat uh, uh, near your near your little tray, so that when they come out, they can actually scratch their paw and scratch their um, uh, and and clean their paw, and the sand and all that will drop onto this net like uh, matting mat before they come out. So um, watching your cat to pull is is really not a good idea. Okay, they they hate that. Most of the cat hate that. So. I'm sorry to tell you, you shouldn't do that, okay? So you can DIY on your own with just uh, the, the string, okay? Next. Um, next, the last thing that I want to teach you today is that when you go to the vet, today I'm trying to teach a lot of things at one go. Um, the carrier that you bring to the vet, if it is possible, Please, uh, please and please uh, bring an open top uh, uh, carrier if your cat is the one that is really scared, okay? Um, do not force them into carrier whenever you go to the vet. It's very, very traumatizing. I want to tell you it's like you hide the carrier somewhere and then whenever you want to go to the vet, right, that they, the vet is someone that they uh, relate as bad person going there means painful okay going there means experience pain so going to the vet is something they hate so if you always hide your carrier somewhere and then after that when you need to bring them to the vet then you bring out the carrier you shove them in wherever they are you chase them you're underneath the table or chair or bed you pull them out you shove them in it's like they don't want to go in, you know, you get two, three person to hold the leg, hold the hand and put it in. It's a very traumatized experience. Do not do that for your cat. Do not, do not, do not do that for your cat. Don't laugh, Jeffrey. That's exactly what a lot of patient or a lot of, a lot of pets owner do, okay? A lot of cat daddy and mommy do because they know that they hate the carrier. I want to give you some tips, okay? How to actually make them like the carrier, okay? First of all, remember, if you haven't purchased a carrier, when you want to purchase a carrier, make sure it can actually open on top, 
and then uh, also also you have to make sure that it's easily dismantled and put back that's one uh, or you can actually look at the first picture here they can actually open in the front and open at the top as well and sometimes there are something that the whole bag that can actually zip out that one um that one is also um helpful okay so first thing first that i need to uh encourage you is that when you are at home when you're very comfortable put some very comfy uh comfy bed or comfy towels or things like that that they like in the carrier okay open the carrier maybe leave the door open okay maybe leave this uh door open like this one on the on the fourth the fourth picture on your right um um you can actually open up the top and open up the front so that they can go in and come out as they like okay you can actually also um put in there and when they go in give them some food that they like you know just a little bit just to tell them that <laughs> this is a nice place to stay and then put it near your living hall or put it near where she always uh, hang around why because then she always see that thing as part of the living room part of the living area part of the comfortable area cats are like dog okay we we really do not like to punish them and we do not like to uh, hold them and handle them in very difficult um, uh, thing some people uh like to scruff the cat like scruffing the cat and hold them up even though they struggle and all that um a nice behaviorist or a nice person or a nice uh, pet owner or a nice mummy like you will not or at any circumstances to try to scrub a cat unless you really have no other ways even then we will try not to until we really cannot handle and the cat is so fierce that we have to actually you know sedate them on doing some procedure uh, at that point of time so maybe out of a hundred patient maybe only like two patient that needs to do this okay two two cats that needs to do this so really at the end like scruff and hold down and and if you can try not to do that at home with your cat too do not punish them as in like punish them as in like physically punish them because they don't really relate um they they don't really relate uh pain or punishment uh as um as a way of uh, teaching or, or as a way of knowing they're doing something wrong they will just know that uh, this person at this point of time is hurting you so the next time when they see you they probably will be very careful with you so try not to do that okay so what you do is you you put a bedding you put a nice um a uh, nice area open it up sometimes if they really voluntarily go in give them some food okay so uh times that you want to go to the vet try okay this is something this is something a bit more that i have to uh share with you if you are you know the, the first few times that going to the vet you're not sure whether how to do it you know how to place a carrier and all that uh we could share with you as well but when when you put in and put out make sure you know like i told you cats like to visualize if you always carry them and put them on the floor they just see people footstep here and there they hear the footstep they smell the very you know different smell different environment kind of thing they're already very stressful and then the footsteps are, are like are like really drum you know heavy drum you know to them and then uh then when you are carrying the carrier right you're knocking on the car knocking on your seat and all that uh, making that kind of noise also annoying them so if you can uh you can make sure you give enough space in the passenger seat and all that to put them in so that they don't get 
uh, knock here and there, the, the, the knocking sound won't be there. That also actually causes a lot of anxiety, all right? And then definitely put them, like I told you, a, a very nice bathing or something that they always smell nice or the towel that they always use is good to bring along if they are really cranky, okay? So that your vet can actually use that thing to actually cover them and and actually, uh, con uh, uh, um, how to say, to handle them better. Okay. Um, right. I think I think that is um, almost. I think that's that's the thing that I want to share for today. It's almost an hour. All right. Uh, okay. Before I answer your question, I just want to quickly tell you guys about things that we're so excited about. Is that there's so many people asking about it. We we really want more people to know because it's good that. Uh, to come in a live, uh, live uh, teaching rather than watching video later, okay? So please, this is the first time that we're going to do this with all the cat's owner. We have done it with the uh, dog's owner, but this is the first time we do it with the cat's owner. We really want to make sure more cat's owner know about this, okay? Then the step one, um, okay, first of all, we want to tell you that we are the first in Malaysia, to actually uh, uh, bring this pet first aid course, uh, a certified one to Malaysia. Okay, it's a US uh, certified pet emergency academy certification. So when you finish all these steps uh, towards the examination, uh, especially the on site uh, first aid and CPR exam, when you pass all this, you actually get a certification that says that you are a certified pet uh, a first aider, okay? Not only with the brand Pet Medic, but it's also with the US brand called Pet Emergency Academy, okay? And then you will also have a card, okay? A card uh, saying that you are a pet first aider that you can actually keep in your pocket. So whenever you, you know, at sometimes not only your pet, sometimes on the road, you know, at anywhere that, you know, some pets that need your help. And when you help them, at least you can actually show to the owner or show to the people that, you know, I'm a pet first aider. I can try to help you. Do you want me to help? Okay. Ask, uh, definitely ask for permission before you help. And then, and then you can help because you are a pet first aider. Okay. And if you sign up for this time, uh, first, batch of this i mean first time of this you will be the first batch of the cat uh pet procedure okay we have done the dog one now it's the cat one okay so first step is that to know your cat this two days basic examination will uh include uh all the things that uh how to handle like how to hold them how to muzzle them how to handle them without muzzle how to actually hold them with towels, and then how to peel them, how to take a heart rate without a stethoscope, how to actually take their respiratory rate, that means the breathing rate, how to take their temperature at home. You know or not, most of the time your, your, your son or your daughter are having fever, you can actually use a thermometer and test them, and you know that they are fever and send them to the clinic, but you never really know that your cat is having fever or not because probably you won't even know what's the normal temperature of your cat, okay? Other than the people who has already attended the class, anyone uh, knows that what is the cat's um, normal temperature? Whoever that has gone through the class and the nurses, please do not answer. Uh, the others can please put in your answer here let's see how many of you that is really good okay so other than that uh the basic uh, examination also will tell you about uh how how to actually examine from head to toe or whether your cat is actually well or not well from the eye see how their eye see how their nose see how their mucous membrane uh then feel their heart rate how to check their pulse hand uh, leg, spine, and the um, and the body temperature, okay. And the 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 best thing is that 
you have to understand how to handle them when they're injured, where they're really painful, whether they will still let you touch them. When they don't let you touch them, preventing from getting bite, preventing from getting bite, how do you actually handle them and put them in the carrier to bring it to the vet? If you can't even put them in the carrier to bring it to the vet, let alone saying that how to help them or bandage them, okay? All right. So the, the, next that, uh, the next that you need to uh, pay attention on, other than the two days, is the seven days uh, uh, pet first aid course. The seven days pet first aid course come, uh, come, come in many topics. Uh, we'll probably talk to you about the topics later on or you can ch check out from the website. All the way from eye injury, uh, uh, urinary injury, that means if your cat, how to detect your cat is, is peeing or not peeing. Uh, that's an urgent thing to do as well, especially male cat. And then when they bleed, what do you do? And then in the seven days, we also will teach you from head to tail how you bandage your cat, okay? When they have a, a big cut or when they fight and all that, how do you actually uh, bandage it before you actually uh, go and see your vet, all right? Especially uh, when they're bleeding a lot, how do you stop the bleeding, okay? How to deal with shock and then how to deal with allergy, how to deal with drowned cat how to deal with a uh, cat that's not breathing, okay? Then uh, step three will be the CPR training course. You always heard about CPR being done in human, in babies. What about a CPR in your cat, for your own cat, for your own kitten, okay? Why do I need to separate this dog course with the cat course? Actually, in the US uh, course, right, it's actually being taught on the same day, same class. I have to separate it because um, as everyone understand or everyone agree with me that um, most of it, most of these are actually uh, different from dogs, okay? And then on the same day, we're going to give you, uh, we'll teach you CPR, how to do it, you know, how the heart works and all that, how to do the CPR. And then you will get this certification exam, okay? The certification exam is to certify you on that day how to do CPR. You will show me how you do CPR. And if you pass it, I will actually give you the certification. Okay? No, no one knows what is the normal temperature of a cat. No one knows. No one actually answering me. Okay. So before we, we stop, I just want to tell you the good news that I was excited about. Uh, for this class, the two days class, is actually only cost 49 ringgit, okay? Only cost 49 ringgit. Okay, for this uh, today's special deal, we have actually uh, given some of this uh, away. Whoever that sign up today for this 49 ringgit course, which is this two days uh, basic examination course, uh, we will actually give them a cat emergency uh, ebook for free. Okay, only the first series, like yeah, we'll have uh, first, second, and third series too. So we'll only give out the the first series, which actually cost twenty nine ninety, which is about thirty ringgit. Okay, so so yeah, sign up tonight so that you will know. Uh, before before twelve a.m. tonight. So okay, so what you do is what you do is. Try to sign up before eleven thirty. If you can sign up now, scan the scan the barcode and sign up now. So let's see. Jackie say thirty seven. Okay. Uh, Ned says uh thirty seven to thirty nine. Um, Eunice also say thirty seven point nine to thirty nine point one. All right. So who is correct? Who is wrong? Okay. That's that's one. Um, the that's one thing that I need to tell you guys first before you leave is that um, the, the thing that we always ask you to answer question here and then we correct you and then we put your name up is not to so-called ridiculate or humiliate or even you know say that you're wrong. We, we realize that when we are doing this answering questions and and um, and uh, back and forth, it's actually causing a lot of fun. And also, when you make mistake and we correct you, you will remember this for life. Trust me. 
if those people who do not want to answer me, you know, didn't even bother to answer me and go through the whole class, they probably do not know what they have actually understood from here. This is a very practical class from the two days class will get you some homework. And then also in the seven days class for the bandaging and all that will get you to do the bandaging at home. And then also send in, um, send in some homework and all that. Why so? Because we know that there are tons of classes outside that you actually can go, go on with. Even you can even go on the Pet Emergency Academy class, which I think a few hundred bucks. And then, you know, they can actually teach you online. But the thing is, if you, if you learn and you never really practice, tell me if, if there's really something happened to your cats or your dog, tell me whether you can dare and then do it or not. You can't. But if you have actually done it a few times, you will definitely know how to do it when they need your help. All right? Is the course online? Yes, the course is online. Two days is actually one hour each only. So it's very little commitment. Okay? Each, each time our class is always 9.30 to 10.30. Okay? Always. We always start on time. Uh, we sometimes doesn't really end on time. Probably maybe 10 minutes more if, if we have more questions. But... Um, it, it's online and um, yeah, and, and it's one hour each day. For seven day classes, we break it into um, two days each week. So we'll run it for about uh, three to four weeks. So sometimes we have very good students that have a lot of questions that actually, you know, are very good. Uh, sometimes we even uh, put in some, uh, put in some bonus session for them. Okay, so, um, right, uh, it's time to tell you what's the normal temperature. The nearest one that I can find is this, but cats' uh, body temperature sometimes is slightly higher than this. Uh, most of the time, uh, from the textbook, it's 38.5 to 39.5, okay? Sometimes when they come to the vet, it could be 39.7 or 39.8. Um, sometimes when they come to a bed, they get very nervous. But sometimes at home, when they're really cool and all that, they could be about 38 to 38.2. But generally, most of the textbook will refer it at 38.5 to 39.5. Uh, but when they are slightly higher or slightly lower, it's still acceptable. Okay? But not 37. 37, we already consider it as uh, too low of a temperature. When they are 37, we already put them into an incubator, uh, a warm room that we actually put in hot air to make them uh, warm, all right? So, right, good. Thank you for answering all those questions, okay? Uh, the two days is the basic examination course, Jamin, correct? All right. Wow, Jasmine, you're fast. Thank you. So, yeah, we're looking forward to see you as well. Uh, the class the class date will be announced soon. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken is mid of uh, mid of uh, November. And uh, we will be engaging uh, with um, with the with the Royal Canyon as well to to do one of his one of her their their life uh, on kitten emergency. So the two days is 11 and 12 November. If you can, please attend the live. If you can't, don't worry. Don't worry about it because we won't be keep repeating this live, um, live class. I have to be very frank with you because I, I don't really have the time to go on and on the same class again and again. So we will be, uh, whatever that we teach on that day, whoever that sign up later or whoever that missed that class will have to go through the video, the live video again. That's all. We don't do live anymore. But after that, we will probably have a um, clarifying session or, you know, revision session that you can still see me and ask questions. But for the class, it's like today, it's engaging because you have been talking to me and I'm reacting to your question. Okay? So I'm, I'm really grateful for all of you. So don't wait. Sign up now and then the, the, um, the ebook will be yours. All right, we'll be sending the ebook uh, together around the time when we finish the when we finish the class. Okay, after we finish the class, we will be sending the ebook to you, and then at that point of time, 
you'll be probably the first batch to get the ebook because then we'll we'll then at that point of time only we will sell online. We won't be selling online now. Okay, right. Thank you very much for all your all your attention and your time. Thank thank you for saying so late. Uh, we'll be seeing you. Oh, uh, one more thing. I have a podcast with uh, Royal Canin as well. It's about diarrhea in kittens, puppy and kitten. Uh, we will be loading it on on uh, pet medic um, pet medic um, uh, page so that you can actually uh, go into uh, Spotify. Is it Spotify, Pangjun? That uh, to listen to that podcast. Okay, they have a series of something else as well. If you guys are interested, all right. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night.